attendance. If any of your bio information has changed, please update it so we can better serve your spiritual needs in the coming days and weeks. And as people come in, would you also make sure it gets back down the aisle to them so that they can register their attendance as well. Uh, we invite you to be on this journey of Advent with us. This week, we have on Tuesday night, uh, the Joy Makers will be having their uh, ministry meeting this week, and they invite you to bring your favorite snack and dish this Tuesday. So we invite you to come and do that. And then on Wednesday night, uh, we will have our normal lineup starting at 6 o'clock with Family Night Supper. And this week, we, uh, Roxanne is to cook. And we're going to be having hamburger steak, mashed potatoes and gravy, pinto beans, cracked and cornbread, chicken spaghetti casserole. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, baked chicken and pumpkin pie casserole. So you invited to dinner. Yum, yum. Yeah, I know you like the, the hamburger steak, don't you? Uh, so uh, come in and be a part of it. And then at 630, we, we invite you to join us in the, in the uh, pastor study for a time of intercessory prayer, followed by uh, our Wednesday night praise and worship service. I'm beginning a new uh, three-week series for Christmas. It's called Surviving the Holidays by Learning Contentment. Surviving the Holidays by Learning Contentment. And so we invite you for the next three Wednesdays to come and as we learn how to survive the holidays. Amen? And then on Thursday night, there will be choir practice at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. I want to remind you that there is no lighthouse, uh, the lighthouse class, the adult class lighthouse is taken off for the month of December as they normally do. So we will not be having the lighthouse uh, class on Sunday morning at 9. I want to remind you that this evening uh, at 5 o'clock at First United Methodist Church at the corner of 5th Avenue and 19th uh, Street downtown, uh, several local choirs and our church quartet will be singing uh, and part of the World AIDS Day service. And we invite you to participate as we participate with our community for World AIDS Day. And I will be doing the benediction for that service. And everyone is welcome. And we invite you to come and to be part of that. Also, I uh, want to uh, remind you that the holiday food uh, uh, drive is on for Greater Birmingham Ministry. There are containers out here and up in the fellowship hall. If you can help bring uh, goods, Covenant is, is partnering with our other mem member congregations of Greater Birmingham Ministry, the 16 Christian congregations, the two Jewish synagogues, and the one uh, Muslim mosque, and we are trying to provide a Christmas dinner for 200 families. And so if you can, please, please help us out. If you would like to give a, a cash donation, money donation, uh, please, you, please do that. We'll take that because uh, we can go buy in bulk and get a lot more than just you buying a few cans at, at the uh, thing. So step inside the door, Missy. Uh, no, the other one. The crazy one, yes, her. Uh, Bobby will be available after the service. If you would like to give money, give, give it to Bobby, and Bobby will see that it gets to Kay and things, because uh, Kay is out of town this weekend. And uh, if you'd like to give money for this, please do so. If you want to give it in the offering, that's fine. Please designate it if you are doing so, so that we can make sure it gets to the right place, okay? Let's help uh, serve 200 families, poor families, Christmas dinner this year. Amen? Um, we, we thank God that Sharon is better and at home. She was here. Uh, she got out of rehab on Wednesday and came to church Wednesday night. And so we, we thank God for that. And we were blessed last week with three baptisms and also three new members. We thank God for that. Our board members on duty today is Carrie King. And, one of our, and the assistant BMOD is one of our new board members, Eric Webb. Uh, the staff member on duty is Deacon Tim Key, and shadowing him today is the Deacon candidate, Stephanie Carroll. If you have any questions, any needs, please see one of them. Uh, no, that's not Stephanie, that's Susan. Uh, Stephanie is a different one, and she, she doesn't have the pretty hair like she does. Okay, where's Stephanie? <laughs> Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> but anyway, 
uh, 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 Susan Carroll, if you have any questions in need, please see one of them. They'll be glad to help you in any way they can. Birthdays this week. Birthdays. Brian Lee's birthday is on the 4th, and Iris Jenkins' birthday is on the 7th, and we wish them happy birthday. Uh, we want to say thank you to uh, uh, the people who provided that fabulous dinner on Wednesday night. We had an overflowing crowd on Wednesday night for dinner. We thank Jerry Hanley, Roxanne Lynch, Mary Jones, Bobby Causey, and Jamie Grime for the wonderful dinner this past Wednesday night. I also want to say thank you to uh, Jeremy Stewart and Siobhan who works on the videography most of the time and we want to thank them for their constant dedication and work as well. One, uh, we want to thank the decorating. Don't you think the sanctuary will look lovely? Amen. We want to thank uh, the decorating team. Uh, uh, we want to thank, uh, of course, leading them was, what's his name? Jerry. Yes. But then uh, Tammy and Jennifer, Mary Lineman, Jean, Eric Carroll, Jeanette, Mary Jones, Carl Jackson, uh, Sean and Jamie, we thank them all for the wonderful work that they did. Amen? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us rise and greet one another in peace. Would you please rise in spirit and stand as you're able for our processional hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, who has made us all brothers and sisters by his loving grace. Join me in praying our prayer of invocation. Come, thou long-expected Jesus, so that as we gather in worship on this first Sunday of Advent, a season of hope, be in our midst and help us to prepare in our hearts while living in hope of each day of your return. In Christ's name, amen. Today we begin our annual vigil of the Advent of the Christ Child. Part of our vigil each year includes lighting the Advent candles. We gather as a people of hope in memory of a miracle that has been repeated hundreds of years, yet astounds us anew each year. As we light the first Advent candle, we remember in the midst of darkness and fear, Christ is present with hope. With this first candle of Advent, we kindle it with hope. We long to feel your presence in our world, to break through and reign with compassion, justice, and peace. Therefore, on this first Sunday of Advent, a season of hope, we light the candle of hope. This morning is the first Sunday of Advent. We come together, as do so many other churches this morning, for the blessing of the Greens. You may ask why we do this. It is to pray for the one who has come, the one who is with us, and the one who is yet to come again. It is to prepare our hearts for the Messiah as we make ready for the birth of the Christ child. Let us also make ready our hearts for the ever-present, never-dying love of Christ. The evergreens represent the ever-present God, ever-alive, since they do not die throughout the seasons of the year. They stand tall in majestic splendor. Evergreens thereby remind us of God's abiding love in Jesus Christ and of our eternal relationship with Him. As the days grow shorter, darker, and colder, let us recall the Gospel of John, speaking of Christ as the light of the world. May you be blessed in this light, warmth, and love this Advent and Christmas season, shall we pray. O oh, loving God, as we enter into this Advent and look forward to Christmas, Help us to open dark places in our lives and memories to the healing light that Christ brings. Show us your creative power of hope. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that, may we, that we may walk in the light of Christ. May God bless us this Advent and Christmas season with his light and love. Amen.
This is our prayer book. It's kept on the pedestal out in the foyer as you come through the front doors of the church right outside the Friends of Dorothy Welcome Center. In it are recorded the prayer requests and the praise reports of our people. On Wednesday night, there's a group of us that meet in the pastor's study. And we, by then, our prayer minister, Jamie, will have put them on a list, and we lift them all individually before the throne of grace. We invite you anytime to come and join us in that time of prayer. Perhaps you didn't have an opportunity to make your prayer request known. Maybe yours is deeply personal, and you would like for us to remember you in prayer this morning. Would you so signify by the raising of your hand. Before we go in prayer this morning, we realize this is the holiday weekend and lots of people are traveling. We want to remember them in their travels. I want you to remember someone in the service who's here today whose wife died this week and we remember you, Howard, and we pray for your son, Michael, as well. It's a difficult time when to lose someone so during the holidays, it's a difficult time to lose someone anytime. But I'm reminded we do not grieve as those without hope. And so this day, we lift, remember them in, in prayer as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. God, we come to you this morning. We are grateful and we are thankful for your mercy and your grace. We come to you and we ask that you would be with us as we enter into this holiday season, we especially lift up Howard and his son, and we lift up those who are traveling. We ask that you would be with them, Lord Jesus. Give them that inner strength to make it through the difficult days. We know that you love us. Your word declares it. Your love proclaims it. And our faith believes it. And so this morning, God, we come to you and we come to adore you because you are Christ the Lord. You alone are worthy. And we come because we know that you are able to do all things. And so, God, we lift up those with special prayer requests this morning. We lift up those that are going through difficult times. We lift up those that just need a fresh touch of your hand this morning. God, we lift up the people of this congregation. We lift up those that are troubled in body and spirit. We lift up the concerns of our community, the world and its leaders, and we lift up your church. And we lift them up because we trust you and we believe, especially as we go in this season of Advent, a season of hope, that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. And so we come to you to worship you, for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name, and all God's children said, Amen. teacher at the door, center door for Children's Church. The Old Testament reading for this first Sunday of Advent is from Isaiah, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains 
It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Please rise in spirit and stand as you are able, for the good news is from the Gospel of Matthew 24, verses 36 through 44. Jesus continued saying, But about that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken, and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have left his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready For the Son is man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Word of God.
Listen to the angels singing, Gloria. Thank you, choir. Thank you. Amen. I always find it interesting that if you follow the lectionary, today is the first Sunday of the new year, but it's also the first Sunday of Advent. And every year, the lectionary readings on the first Sunday of Advent is about the second coming, in case you were wondering what those lessons were about. But today marks the beginning of Advent. It's a time of preparation. It's a time of moving towards the coming again of the Messiah. It's a time of great expectation. It's a time of great anticipation. After all the shootings and arrests and thuggery of Black Friday shopping, I got to wondering what is it we really are anticipating? Amen? What are we getting ready for? What do we expect to happen? Do we anticipate the world to come to an end like a lot of religious cults do at this time of the year? Or are we preparing our hearts and our spirits to receive again the coming of the Christ child into the world? I know that some of us probably are preparing for yet another month-long shopping spree that some folks have called uh, economic first-degree murder. That's where we willfully and with malice of forethought commit murder on our bank accounts. Or maybe we're getting ready for the seven to ten pounds the average American will gain during this season of the year. I'm praying this Lord this year that, Lord, I will be an underachiever. But if Thursday was any example, I may exceed a little bit. Or maybe are you getting ready for the depression, the anxiety, even the rage that accompanies many folks at this time of season, this holiday season of the year? You see, I believe that if we get caught up in the consumer Christmas, and I firmly believe that in the United States, we celebrate two separate events on December the 22nd, 25th. 22nd was my daddy's birthday. We can easily find that instead of preparing to sing O Holy Night, we will be living O Holy Nightmare. Amen? The things that somehow we have in our lives that often come to define Christmas of what Christmas means or that we go do during the season of Advent makes it hard to really remember that Advent really is a season of hope. And so this morning I want to remind you that Advent is a season of hope. Let us pray. God, we do thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you that you have called us to be your servants. We thank you that you have called us to live in the present, to experience you in new and fresh ways today. And God, in all that we get caught up in in this time of the season, I pray that you will remind us at this moment, at this time, that you are here, that you want to be part of this walk with us, that you want to encourage us and give us hope. And so I pray as David did in Psalms 19, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. For I pray it in Jesus' name, and all God's children said, Amen and Amen. Advent, a season of hope. For many folks, as you well know, that hope is not the thing that they experience during this season, especially if you are in the habit of observing our consumer Christmas preparations, because for those folks, inevitably, you're going to be disappointed, because Christmas never seems to measure up to our fantasies, amen? Even for those who manage to have some of their Christmas dreams come true or their Christmas wishes fulfilled, the season is over so quickly. 
that the need to make New Year's resolutions to lose those added pounds or to be more patient with those idiots that somehow managed to get a driver's license and drive the roads during these holidays require you to repent even before the decorations come down. Amen? But the Advent we celebrate in the church, the one that has nothing to do with how many number of shopping days left and left for Christmas is altogether supposed to be different. The placing of the greens, the setting of the poinsettias, the lighting of the Advent candle, all of these things are intended to help us to dream of a better world. To allow the expectant visions that have nothing to do with sugar plum fairies dancing ahead. It's all right a few fairies dancing, but not sugar plum fairies. <laughs> Advent invites us to fill our cup of today with the full measure for tomorrow. But the passage today about the second coming from Isaiah and from the gospel express, expresses the Christian hope of the season of Advent, a season of hope. And it's one that expresses the hope for a brighter tomorrow, a brighter future. When the prophet Isaiah uh, thought about the advent of God, he envisioned a world that was united in worship and committed to peace. Isaiah dreamed of a, of a time when the nations and the people of the world would join together in recognizing the sovereignty of God. And he declared in the reading this morning, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his past. In Isaiah's vision, war would become a thing of the past. The nations would learn to live together in peace. What a wonderful vision. I wonder this morning, what sort of images come to your mind when you think of Advent? I have to admit that I never knew this word <laughs> growing up. I grew up at the Pentecost Holiness Church. The only season we celebrate is Pentecost. <laughs> but I've learned to love this season of Advent. We didn't call it Advent, but I still have memories from this time of the year. Maybe yours was like mine, where we were, I grew up out in the country, and the big thing out in the country was to have live nativity scenes at churches. And you used to go all over the, the place looking at the live nativity scenes, and sometimes you'd see things that you didn't want to see, especially when the, horse, the donkey had just got finished doing his business. Oh, I remember the annual Christmas program always came before Christmas, and it was always done with children. And, they, and the adoration of the Christ child was so wonderful and so pure, and they gave so much to that presentation. Maybe you didn't grow up in church like I did. Maybe your traditional seeds and symbols were hugely lit trees like they do on the White House lawn or or the one that they light up in Rockefeller Center. I didn't even watch it this year. Did they? I guess they still did that, huh? But you see, the way we see Advent and the way we see Christmas determines how we approach the season celebration. The essential work of Advent is not about hanging decorations, but it's about decorating our hearts and our lives with the presence of Christ who came in the person of Jesus that first Christmas. And then it's about learning to live in peace, not making hell for other folks, but peace. Amen? I know somebody, some folks think it is their spiritual duty to make life hell for other folks. It is not. Amen? Some folks frantically shop and work themselves into a frenzy as if Christmas will only come if they get everything ready for it. I have news for you, honey. Christmas is going to come whether you are ready or not. Amen? It's on the calendar. 
even a casual reading of the Bible reveals that the advent of God is much more about surprise than predictability. It's much more about revelation than decoration. Now, please don't misunderstand me. Uh, don't understand, misunderstand what I'm saying. I, 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 I think it's wonderful that we place the poinsettias. I think it's wonderful that we place the greens and as... Um, and, Susan Green's father reminded me he's so glad that we bless the greens and not hang the greens. <laughs> I'm so glad that we light the candles and we put up the trees and, and, and all the decorations, which is absolutely beautiful, don't you think? And I want to thank Jerry and his team for doing it for us. But I want you to know that the message of Advent is not put up the decorations, here I come. The message of Advent is watch and wait. You must be ready because the Son of Man comes at an hour when you do not expect him. Christmas is going to come this year whether you're ready or not. The other truth is Christ comes whether we're ready or not too. So it pays to be ready and stay ready. And so often I know that some of us feel like this can't be Advent. This can't be December. I haven't even made out my shopping list yet. Christmas can't come. I haven't even brought up the decoration from the basement yet. And it makes you wonder, why do we assume that Christmas only come if we make all the proper <laughs> arrangements and proper preparations? The truth of the matter is Christ comes into our lives whether we're prepared for it or not as well. That's God's initiative, not ours. Christ arrives in the midst of us, not as a reward for our preparation, but as a result of the love and the compassion of a God who loved, so loved the world that he gave his son. Our choice, our only choice, is whether we're going to receive him or not if we're going to let him make that difference in our lives or not. Your choice is not whether he comes or not. It's whether will you receive him or not. In the gospel lesson this morning, read from Matthew, the disciples are talking to Jesus about the second coming. They want to know when it's going to happen so they can be ready for it. Jesus, as he often does, doesn't give them a a straight up answer he goes round about to get to the answer so he what he does is he tells them the story of Noah he reminds them of the, the story of Noah and he says you know back in the days of Noah people were living their lives with a little concern for God they were eating and drinking and marrying and celebrating and they was not in it they were not concerned about God and then suddenly the rains came and Noah and his family were the only ones wise enough to listen to God's warning and to seek salvation. And, and Jesus said, when I come again, he's talking to disciples, it's going to be just like that. Life is going to be going on as usual. People will be doing what people normally do. They'll be buying and selling They'll be working and playing. They'll just be doing all those ordinary things. And then suddenly, without warning, ta-da, I'm going to be there. And when that happens, some are going to be ready, but some are not. And some will remember the admonition of Jesus that I'm coming again, and some will not. And he says that other stuff will have become imp more important to them. And those who forgot or disbelieved will be greatly disappointed. That's what Jesus told them about the second coming. I wonder if you understand what Jesus was saying right there. Disciples, you see, was asking about the timing of the second coming. And Jesus said to them, wrong question. You got the wrong question. The question isn't when I'm coming again. Amen? He said, the question is, what are you supposed to be doing in the meantime waiting for me to come again? That's the question for us today. The important thing in this season of Advent is not when Jesus is coming again, it's 
what's the quality of our waiting supposed to do, be? Amen. You caught it better than the Alabama players last night. <laughs> Too many folks today concentrate all their energy on when Jesus is coming back. If you don't believe me, go channel surf sometime, the Christian channel. Now, today you can't do that on TVN. They'll be remembering Paul Crouch who died yesterday. But there are lots of other Christian channels out there. You go channel surfing, you will bound to find some televangelist who will tell you in a very loud and convincing way that these are the days that Jesus was talking about and Jesus is coming back any moment now. As they form at the mouth. There's even a program called This Week in Prophecy. And they tell you how the events, they even knew that Obama was part of This Week in Prophecy. Where do we get these nuts? You see, I wonder sometimes, have these folks ever read the gospel? Especially this part that was read this morning from Matthew that Jesus was speaking to his disciples. You see, the problem with what these folks that know when Jesus is coming back, what's missing from their pronouncement of coming gloom and doom is a reminder that our concentration is not to be on the future, but on the presence. It's supposed to be on the quality of life that we live right now, not some pie in the sky in the by and by. Amen? Jesus doesn't call us to a passive do-nothing waiting. Jesus says to his disciples that the way we live in this world as kingdom people today, as Advent today, uh, people today, is serious business. And he calls us to have an active faith. The last line that was read, that Susan read from the passage from Isaiah, echoes that call. It says, O house of Jacob, Come, let us walk in the light of God. Walking is an active thing. It's not passive. We are to be active in our waiting. Advent invites us to look at the future, but the demanding challenge of Advent, the more exciting promise, is that it's about now that now is part of the kingdom too. That incarnation of Jesus coming in the flesh declares that the cup of our present, our right now, is supposed to be filled with overflowing presence of God. No matter whether we consider the present to be sunny and bright or fair to partly cloudy or even gloomy and dismal, God sends the Messiah to come and be present with us right now. Elsewhere in Matthew, he describes in one single word this thing of being present right now. It's called Emmanuel, God with us. That's the thing we need to remember about Advent. We may be celebrating an event 2,000 years ago, but we're talking about God with us. Not that God has been with us, not that God will be with us, but God is with us right now. That's the hope of Advent that we need to take for our lives, that no matter what you're going through, Emmanuel, God is with you. And it may be difficult, but God is with you. The message of Advent is that each moment of our lives has some eternal significance, that the God of all things past, the God of all things present, is also the God right here, right now. And God is inviting us this Advent to live in the present, to live in expectation, to live in awareness of the fact that eternal re realities somehow have a way of just breaking into our lives at any moment because the reality is that all of us need those eternal realities to break in our lives, especially when you've been going through some difficult things. You need God's presence. Amen? 
And so this morning, I come to tell you that Advent is here. Advent is here. It's here now. And that's the theme. And that the theme of our quality of waiting should be, are we passively just waiting? Or are we right now walking in the light of God? Are we actively awaiting his coming? In the, in, the, in the translation I was reading this week, it used the term breaking in, that Jesus break, was breaking in to our lives. I thought that was an interesting choice of words. Because you see, those who take the kingdom seriously of God knows that Jesus teaches it clearly and well that our work is not over when we stand here as preachers and preach, repent and be saved. That's just the start of it. Yeah, we should preach that sometime. Not at funerals, okay? I can't stand people to preach salvation sermons at funerals. But Jesus is coming soon is not the whole message. There's much more to the gospel than that. Kingdom living is not a matter that can be summed up in some cliche or uh, of some pious uh, pronouncements. Advent challenges us to hear and believe the promise of Emmanuel for our lives. Emmanuel simply means God with us. And that challenge doesn't, call, uh, challenge doesn't call us to be so heavenly minded that we do no earthly good in the meantime or to become so starry-eyed over the future that we overlook the present. Advent reminds us that God often breaks into our lives unexpectedly. We can't know the time that the next encounter is going to be with God. We can't predict whether all that meeting is going to be all joyful experience of forgiveness or, and peace or if it's going to be a call to repentance and responsibility or a combination of both, which I, which I imagine will be. But we need to realize that when it comes, we need to be ready for it. And this morning, I wonder if it's coming in your life today. I'm wondering if right now you need an eternal reality to break into your life where you are, with what you're going through. I'm wondering if that eternal reality is a moment that you need to remember that no matter what I'm faced with, he's here. He's present. And so now we have the greens up. The poinsettias have been placed. The advent candle has been lit. And as that old stupid song used to say, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. But I wonder if we're really ready for Christmas yet. I don't think so. After all, that's why there's four Sundays of Advent. <laughs> God knew it was going to take us a while. Let me just say to you, as we prepare for, prepare for Christmas this Advent season, He's here. The theme of this first Sunday of Advent is hope. And maybe that doesn't reflect what your life has been like this year. Maybe this has not been your finest year. I know it hadn't been for me. And yet somehow you need hope. I want to remind you of what's anchored my life through all of this year. I knew that he was here. I really believe that he's here. I really believe that he lives in me. Kurt Talley wrote a song that I haven't heard sung in a long time. But I want us to sing the chorus this morning. But before we do it, I want you to hear the words of the verses that lead to the chorus because they remind us that this is a season of hope, a season of Christ's presence 
as we prepare for Christmas. The verses said this, I sense an awesome moving of the Holy Spirit. I see his countenance on your face. I know that there are angels hovering all around us for the presence of God is in this place. I search for peace from among the shadows, dark and lonely. Gave up on finding strong and lasting love. I tasted all the things that sin could think to offer me. But today, I feast on manna from above. Why? Because he's here. Hallelujah. He's here. Amen. He is here. Holy, holy. I will bless his name again. He is here. Listen closely. Hear him calling out your name. He is here. You can touch him. And you will never be the same. This Advent, you remember, he is here. Let's stand and sing. God said, you may be seated. This morning you heard the good news of hope. It's important to know that there are so many people in our community and when I don't talk about the LGBT community, I'm talking about the community as a whole. Amen. I'm talking about the streets of Centerpoint. I'm talking about the streets of downtown Birmingham. I'm talking about the streets of Afghanistan because we've heard the testimonies of how our internet ministry has touched the lives of people throughout the world. And what's important is your tithes and offerings that allows that ministry to thrive and to strive and to reach those people who are lost 
and need that hope. Now this morning I want to remind you also that you have We Miss You cards that are inside the pews of where you're sitting. We're going into a very important season where there's a lot of people that don't have family, but they need to be assured that they've got a family at Covenant Community Church, and they're welcome to this place anytime. So look around you. If you see somebody you've missed for a while, all you've got to do is just jot their name on the card. You don't have to worry about the address. Put a little note in there. Let them know that you care. Let them know that you miss them. Let's let them know that they can get that hope here at Covenant. Amen? Amen. Would the ushers please come forward for our giving of our tithes and offerings? thankful for this day. We're thankful for the renewed hope that you give us each and every day. Father, I pray right now that you'll bless these gifts of tithes and offerings. Allow us, the leaders of your church, to be good stewards of this money so that we can continue your work in our church, your church, and throughout the community. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ I pray. Amen. On this first Sunday of Advent, let us prepare ourselves for the receiving of the Sacrament of Holy Communion. 
As we say together our general confession, let us pray. God of Advent, we confess that Jesus is here at all times, but we often forget it. Forgive us for our sins and forgetfulness in the advent of hope. Help each of us be prepared in the hope and presence in Christ's name. Amen. We now pause for a moment to individually confess to you, Almighty God, those things which separate us from you, others, and our best selves. Let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God's forgiveness is present in Christ already in this season of hope. Therefore know that God has heard your confessions and you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Join with me in the liturgy of the great thanksgiving. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks to God. It is a right, a good, and a joyful thing to always and everywhere give thanks to you, Creator God. Therefore, we join our voices with the angels and the host of heaven forever proclaiming your glory, singing. the night over 2,000 years ago, Jesus was with his disciples in an upper room sharing a meal. During the meal, he took bread, gave thanks, and lifted it to heaven and broke it, passed it to them and said, take and eat, for this is my body that will be given over for forgiveness of sin. At the end of the meal, he took the cup of Elijah, lifted it to heaven and gave thanks passed it to his disciples and said, Take and drink, each of you, for this is my blood of the new and everlasting covenant that will be poured out for the forgiveness of sin. Each time you eat this bread or you drink from this cup, do this in remembrance of me. If you feel comfortable, stretch forth your hands and we will collectively ask for consecration. Loving God, I hold in my hand the wheat of the field and the fruit of the vine. I ask you to send your Holy Spirit among these common elements to make them become for us the body and blood of Jesus. Amen.
Let us join together in proclaiming the affirmation of the mystery of our faith. Brothers and sisters at Covenant Community Church, we hold an open communion. That means you don't have to be a member of this church or a member of any church. We just want you to come to this table looking for Emmanuel, knowing he is here. Um, there will be intercessors at the altar after the service is over. Please make yourself available if you need special one-on-one -on -one prayer. They will be happy to pray with you. Remember, this is a reverent time. People are praying, and hopefully people are feeling Advent because it is here everywhere, always. I invite you to the table of blessing and hope as the ushers direct. 